The American justice system has rules and procedures that make our constitutional rights not just some stuff written on paper, but real rights that the government must respect. Name put some respect on it. Did you the Supreme Court decisions that mold the way the government operates come from real criminal cases. With real criminals, here are some of those people. Number one, Fremont Weeks. Fremont Weeks was arrested at his job at Union Station, Kansas City, Missouri for using mail to transport lottery tickets, which was part of an illegal gambling operation. Police searched his home without a warrant while he was detained at the station and found more proof of his lottery ticket scheme. They handed him and the evidence over to the federal government since using the postal service made it a federal crime. He was convicted, but his case was appealed up to the Supreme Court and they ruled that since the police did not have a warrant, the evidence in the home could not be used against Weeks, and that federal agents cannot use illegally obtained evidence in court even if the local police had given it to them. This would mean that the exclusionary rule, the rule that the court will throw out evidence that is illegally obtained, was created and used in federal courts only. Number 2. Dollary Map Dollary Dolly Map was involved in racketeering and gambling operations in Cleveland, Ohio, and in May of 1957, police received a tip that a man named Virgil Ogletree was hiding at her residence. Ogletree was wanted for questioning for a porch bombing of rival racketeer and future boxing promoter Don King. When the police arrived, Mapp told them to come back with a warrant. They came by several hours later with more officers and probably a fake warrant. They found Ogletree, gambling slips, and pornographic material which was against the law to possess at that time. Mapp was convicted on the pornographic material, but the Supreme Court ruled that since the police did not have a warrant, what they found as a result of their illegal search should be excluded and extended the ruling that applied in the Weeks case to all law enforcement, not just the feds. This of course coming decades later. Number 3. Clarence Earl Gideon Clarence Earl Gideon was a drifter and a thief, and in June of 1961, he was arrested for stealing money and beverages from a pool room in Panama City, Florida. He was too poor to afford an attorney, and at the time, Florida only gave you an attorney if you were facing the death penalty. We all know that anyone who represents himself has a fool for a lawyer, and when that fool lawyer is an 8th grade dropout known for cutting class, you know you're going to prison. Gideon was sentenced to 5 years in prison, but was able to appeal his case to the Supreme Court, which held that the Sixth Amendment requirement to a fair trial cannot be met when the poor defendant goes up against the skilled lawyer. It's just the government dunking on you at that point. Gideon got his second trial and was acquitted. The Gideon case now meant that the government would be forced to pay for legal services for defendants who cannot afford them themselves. Number four is Ted. I'll just call him Ted because I've heard his last name pronounced Kimmel, Chimmel, Shimel, Shimmel. So he's Ted. Ted was a burglar and in 1965 he burglarized a coin shop in Santa Ana, California. The police obtained a warrant for his arrest, went to his home, and his wife let them in while he was on his way home from work. Ted arrived, police served the warrant, and placed him under arrest. They asked if they could look around and he said no but they searched his home incident to a lawful arrest and found the coins they were looking for. He was tried and convicted based on the evidence found in his home and he appealed to the Supreme Court which held that the officers can search what is in the immediate reach of a suspect they arrest but that they need a search warrant for everything else. Number 5 Ernesto Miranda If you've ever watched a cop show you have heard Miranda writes. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. Why do you can't afford an attorney? Oh. We will provide you with the dumbest lawyer on earth. If you get Johnny Cochran, I'll kill you. In March of 1963, Ernesto Miranda committed heinous crimes against an 18-year-old that, not to go too deep into detail, let's just say that if it happened today, it would be investigated by the Special Victims Unit. Phoenix police recognized Miranda's plate and description and brought him to the station for a lineup. The victim identified him and he was arrested and taken to an interrogation room. After hours of being interrogated, he signed his confession, which had his rights written out on the top of the page, 
but those rights were never fully explained to him. He was convicted, even though his lawyer fought to have the confession thrown out, and his case was appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court. The court found that his rights were violated and required that law enforcement inform people of their rights before a custodial interrogation. Miranda got his second trial without the confession being admitted, but he still lost and was convicted and sentenced to 20 years in prison. He paroled out in 1972 and was killed in a barroom fight in 1976. His murderer was arrested on the scene and read his Miranda rights. Wow, thanks a lot, guy I just stabbed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any requests on anything police, criminology, or criminal justice related, please drop a comment. Thanks.